Last week I made the first trip with my wife without kids in six years. Checked out the small CTO field office and greeted the millions of fans that had gathered outside in their CTO socks. The artwork The Kiss by Klimt can be bought as an NFT. First, I have to brag a little bit. Yesterday we had the DCA show. I said this. So we have to start thinking like a contrarian. Where would they put the stop loss? Maybe 26,500. The whales then, they will hunt those stops. Then 20 minutes later, this happened. Sorry, there's breaking news. Yeah. Binance and CZ sued by CFTC over regulatory violations, which is why the market's coming down. And price went to 26,000. 525. Everyone saying that technical analysis doesn't work. Well, I rest my case. So I actually bought a little more Bitcoin yesterday, adding to my positions from 17,433 and the gold flip area here at 21,000. The next support below is indeed 25k and if they hunt stop losses there too, maybe to this volume node or to 23,500, not a prediction, just if it happens I'll probably add some there too. I have not been so impressed by the work of the US regulators so far. They missed protecting investors from FTX, BlockFi, Celsius, Voyager, Gemini, Luna, 3AC and all the other companies that actually hurt investors. And that were rather hard to see through from the outside where subpoenas and all that stuff would actually have been helpful. Instead they've gone after a bunch of open source projects where all transactions were already public on chain. The white paper public on the internet and the code on GitHub, Paxos which issued the, in my opinion, most secure stablecoin and that actually had a regulator checking so they didn't lose the money. Just not the same regulator. Kraken for making a good solution for users to stake Ethereum, which everyone liked. And that was safe. Coinbase, who wrote like this in response. We asked the SEC for reasonable crypto rules for Americans. We got legal threats instead. And now Binance. And as I can understand, the chief complaint is that they let some US customers enjoy the service. CZ wrote like this in response. We block users by nationality, KYC, IP address, including commonly used VPN endpoints outside of the US, mobile carrier, device fingerprints, bank deposits and withdrawals, blockchain deposits and withdrawals, credit card BIN numbers and more. We are aware of no other company using systems more comprehensive or more effective than Binance. If Binance processed 43 trillion dollars in trading volume in 2021 and have thousands of employees over six years, yeah, there will probably be some dumb stuff at some point. But I didn't even see any allegation that money has been lost or stolen or anything. I'm not endorsing any company or any service or any coin. Not Binance, not any other exchange. I have no particular insights into any exchange. I'm not affiliated with any exchange. I don't recommend any exchange. They have to make their own statements and it's your call what to use, if any. And crypto indeed means a huge risk to lose everything. No doubt. I just don't understand why these US regulators did nothing with the companies where they were actually needed and instead go after all the companies that try to do right. Is it because they are already cooperating so it's easier to turn that information against them? I don't know. I have two big conclusions from all the shenanigans going on right now. Number one. The proposition of Bitcoin is stronger than ever. Bitcoin was founded with two principles. A more sound money, Chancellor on brink of a second bailout for banks, inscribed in the Genesis block forever. Now the exact same things are happening again, with banks going bankrupt and getting bailouts and inflation going haywire. And the second principle was that you can't really switch it off. That's clear now when every other project is threatened but they can't touch Bitcoin. There the Bitcoin maximalists have actually been right. Then the regulators say that they don't want to touch it while in fact they can't. The second big conclusion for me from all this is that the risk in crypto as a whole has gone up. These US regulators are dropping heavy bombs. They're trying to kill it. I think they're doing a huge mistake. Technology disrupts and they know it. Where do we stand? We central bankers, we have been operating as 
a monetary anchor in relation to the commercial banks and the private money. If we are not in that game, if we are not involved in experimenting, in innovating in terms of digital uh, central bank money, we risk losing the role of anchor that we have played uh, for many, many decades. So at least from the outside, this seems a coordinated effort to kill the competitor to the traditional financial system. A competitor that is faster, more cost effective, more innovative, taps into global open source innovation, idealism, purpose, global reach, global technology, thousands of developers working out of sheer passion and fun and with a chance to get rich if they succeed in a startup culture. Things that you just can never compete with if you run a local government project with paid employees. That is obvious, but then what to do? Well, every other turn of technology has already shown what is the right action and what is the wrong action. This lady wrote it so well yesterday. Imagine if more than a century ago, regulators had cut Ford and General Motors off from banking services because they considered automobiles too risky or too competitive with trains and horses. In 1980, Massachusetts security regulators barred citizens from buying stocks in Apple's IPO on the grounds that it was too risky. And because of semiconductors, we now know what happens when America fails to keep key industries onshore. Government censorship as a backdoor substitute for the legislative process has no place in finance or in any industry. Definitely read this article. She summarized the issue very well. So fact is that all these politicians and regulators in the US are on the wrong track. When there is a technology inflection point, we all need to accept that this technology is already here and can't be put back into the box. They should take advantage of the innovation culture in the US. This will be the next wave of companies after the Internet Web 2 companies founded 20 years ago. But they don't. They think that they can stop technology and everything will go back to how it was before. That's wrong. But they either don't understand that or just don't care. Perhaps they try to cling on to the past a little longer out of pure self-interest. Like screw tomorrow. I don't know the reason. I don't understand how it can go so wrong. So if we go back looking at the market and seeing this purely as an investor, then it's ironic, isn't it? They warn about the high risk crypto, while actually the by far highest market risk right now is the regulators themselves. Once again, I'm not participating or affiliated with any exchange here or defending any company. I'm here with two perspectives only. I love technology, I think blockchain is the next big technology revolution, perhaps together with AI. And two, I'm here as an investor. I want to be protected as an investor. So the mission statement from these regulators is good. It's the execution that so far has not been good. They missed all the bad guys and shot many of the good guys. That's just a fact and I don't think anyone disputes that. All this just doesn't seem done with investor protection in mind or a good use of tax money for the citizens in the US. Now I will end this rant because actually I'm ranting about I feel I truly know nothing about. I'm not an expert. Also, I don't even live in the US. I'm just a spectator here, commenting from the sidelines in a field I don't know. I'm an engineer, not a lawyer. And it's possible that I just don't understand. But my conclusion from all this applies to me as an investor. Because the conclusion is that the risk of being in the crypto market has gone up dramatically. Because who knows what bomb these guys will drop next. Then the reward also has to be high if putting money into the industry. So I for myself as an investor will be willing to go harder from this point onwards. From a pure risk reward mathematical perspective I will go for higher risk, higher reward. 
because the risk of even being in this space is now higher. So far in 2023, we have had a Bitcoin-led rally. We can see that very clearly from the Bitcoin dominance, which if we exclude the stable coins has actually already broken out. That means I stay mostly in Bitcoin for now, hoping for more dips to support with the trend remaining up. If Bitcoin then stabilizes at a higher level and doesn't fall back down, that's where we can get a real altcoin rally. That's where huge multiples, the 100x coins, have been found in the past cycles. When the Bitcoin dominance starts falling off a cliff, while Bitcoin price holds comparably stable. This time, I'll go harder than ever. I'll spend the next weeks extending my tools. I have new ideas. It's time for the next level of mastery. My course is taken down for new signups at the moment as we take care of current new members. I have a request. In Instagram impersonation has become a huge problem. I'm obviously not much of an Instagrammer, so I have never had many followers there. That means that the impersonators can easily add 1000 fake followers and then that account looks like the legit account, while my real account looks like it's the impersonation. And these scammers are actually getting through to people. Real people are getting scammed. Instagram is doing absolutely nothing here. A few times they've even rejected my impersonation reports because CTO is not my first name in my passport. Yeah, dude. I've reported so many of these accounts, but they of course just keep making new ones with some automatic tool. So my request is to please go in on Instagram and follow my real account. The one with handle CTO Larson without any underscore, without any special characters, with two S, just to get the follower count up. You don't need to do anything. Even if you don't barely use Instagram, please just log in once and follow me, just so we can get that number up and get an upper handle on the scammers. Elon Musk has almost completely solved the problem on Twitter that has gone from hundreds of impersonators per day for me to basically zero. Come on Zuckerberg, do something man. As for actual content, just stay subscribed here on YouTube with the bell switched on or YouTube won't notify you. Thank you Tak, CTO Larsen out, hej då!